Welcome, my name is Coach Devender and welcome to another Solo Success webinar. Here what I want to do is give you some ideas uh, in terms of helping you create the results that you want uh, this year in your business. And uh, so the focus of this uh, short webinar, I'm going to take about 20 minutes of your time, and the focus here is to uh, equip you with an idea that you can use right away to help you be more productive in your business. Uh, the, the theme of today's Solo Success webinar is Resolutions Point the Way a Project Gets You There. And so in this, uh, in this little presentation, I want to show you the concept of projects, which I believe is a, a really good way to cut through your to-do list uh, to create a good structure so that you can generate the results that you want in your business. So I'm going to, to share with you the idea of, of projects and, and why it's so important to me. Um, I started out my career as a technology developer, as a research and development engineer, and a project manager. And so I learned the discipline of projects. And basically, engineering, as an engineer, what we're doing is all about projects. In engineering, we, for example, an engineer uh, comes across a problem or a situation that uh, we're called on to create a, a result, uh, create a solution for. And so we can imagine the solution in our minds, and then through a structured process, we transform our solution that we envision into a result. And that's the idea here with projects. Engineers talk always about projects. We measure our life with projects. We define our life with projects. We get paid on projects. And that's the way I believe, that's the road to success that I believe that you can take when you are self-employed, when you are on your own, instead of just facing an endless carpet of things you need to do to deliver, by breaking it down into projects, it becomes a lot more manageable. In a typical year, I open maybe about 150 projects. Projects can be a a change I want to create, something that I want to, to create in my business, a change I want to make, um, a, a, a result that I want to achieve. It could be um, a client that I, I want to work with. It could be an ebook. It can be a, a video. It can be anything where I want to generate something that creates an impact, a measurable impact in, in my experience of success. That's a project. If we look at how we go from an idea to a result, an idea to impact, I call this the action cycle. And it's basically creating results is about getting into this action cycle and accelerating it. All, every action, every result that we want to create, every impact starts with an idea. And that's why resolutions are, are so are so powerful because at the beginning of the year we have all kinds of ideas of things that we want to do, things we want to change, things we want to we want to create. And so this idea, every result has to start with an idea. If there's no idea behind the the project, if there's no idea behind the resolution, there can't be a result. So the idea has power to it. It's a, it's it's the vision of what we want to create. It's the challenge we we give ourselves. Then the second part is about strategy. It's about generating the strategy, the plan. How are we going to make this happen? So we look at um, alternatives. We look at uh, processes. We look at at uh, strategies we can use. Okay, what do I need to do? Um, let's say my resolution is I want to increase my income by. 20% this year. Okay, strategy. That means how many clients do I want to get? What kind of clients do I want to get? Where am I going to get those clients? Things like that. We create a plan, a strategy. What's interesting is strategy for me is everything that's happening in your head, everything that's happening on paper before you move into action. And this is why I call before plan and after plan. So the strategy is the plan. And then after the plan, you move into execution. And execution is really, really important uh, because that's what changes our status quo. That's what creates our result. And then finally, 
the results generate an impact, a difference. Uh, uh, so, so it can be an impact on myself. It can be an impact on people around me, on my environment. It's this change, this this change to the status quo. And then, really important, you have feedback. Feedback, depending on the kind of result that you get, you can change your execution, you can change your strategy, or even change your idea. But I see a lot of people get stuck in or at two levels. Either they they have great ideas, great intentions, great resolutions. But then they're stuck in strategy. They're always planning, okay, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. That becomes really tough uh, in terms of uh, creating results because you're not actually creating anything. It's all about dreaming. It's all about tomorrow. Then the next step is where people get stuck a lot is in execution. You're always doing, 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 but you're not taking the time to look at the results and seeing how the feedback from your results so the results, the impact, and the feedback can modify your execution so that you're more effective and more efficient. So keep this in mind. I come, I, I, I go back a lot to the action cycle in my coaching because I find that that's where uh, people get stuck. Uh, that, that's where that's where people uh, tend to to break down. They either jump too quickly, they go from idea right to execution, or they stay stuck in strategy or they don't take the time to look at their results, create the impact, and feedback into their system so that they get the results that they want. So why should you think projects? So why should you think projects? Why, why this concept of projects? Well, what I really like about projects with a capital P, it's a mechanism, it's a, it's a framework to help you focus your energy towards a specific goal. So this is the intention. My goal is my intention. It's, it hasn't happened yet, but I set the goal so that, yeah, this is what I want to create. A deliverable, a tangible deliverable. Here's the document. Here's the report. Here's the, uh, here's the time I spend with the client, and the client achieves X, Y, Z result. A timeline. A project is not a project. A project is, sorry, a project is a dream until you put a timeline to it. That means by the 1st of uh, first of April, let's say, I want to have achieved X, Y, Z, and a support structure. You need a support structure for a project to work. It's a support structure in terms of your systems, so the logistics, the, the tracking, and all that's a support structure, and also the people to make it happen. It's also an important part of your support structure. So these three elements, a goal, a deliverable, a timeline, a support structure, are what really distinguish a project from just simply saying, one day I'm going to do it. And then, uh, and if you look uh, at this, it, it, it feeds right back into what we were talking before about the, um, about the, uh, the action cycle. You know, we were talking about the action cycle, the, uh, the idea, strategy, execution, impact. And so that's why these four elements are really, really important. So how do you go about redefining your resolution into a project? So to take this idea, this intention, I want to, I want to write a book this year. Uh, I want to, um, uh, I want to uh, be more present uh, in in video or in audio. Uh, I want to have more clients. Um, it can be self care. It, it works with self care too. You know, I want to lose thirty pounds. How does that's a resolution. How do you turn it into a project? Well, first, it's about having a vision, a really, really clear vision of what you want. When you turn that vision now, vision is just, okay, this is what I want. Turn it into an intention. Now, the intention is a vision with some power behind it. Okay? We're going to, we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes about exactly how that happens. Vision is the vision, just stand alone. Okay, this is what I wish, I wish, I wish. This is, that's where most people fall down in their resolutions or their goal setting is that there's no power behind it. There's no commitment behind it. And that's the purpose of an intention. Then you have the objective. The objective now, we're starting to put some tangible to it. We're starting to put some tangible in terms of the...
looking, we're now looking for some real results. And then finally, the project, the definition of the project that's going to help you create that objective. So let's talk about the five characteristics of a successful project. Those elements that need to be in place so you can go from vision to intention to objective to project. And it starts off with SMART goals. You've probably heard of the acronym S-M-A-R-T, SMART. I sort of redefined it a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Of course, the first one is always specific. It has to be specific to um, a bigger picture. It has to be uh, it has to be in alignment with a bigger picture. Uh, and uh, and the project then becomes one element, one implementation of the bigger picture. What do I mean by that? For example, I have a long goal of becoming a published author. I want to be generating books on around once every two years, 18 months. And that's where that's how I want to be seen. It's a long-term project. It's a five to ten year project. Well, uh, or five to ten year goal. Well, the specific project that I'm working on this year is publishing a book. And within that, I have a sub-project, which is creating an audiobook. And the audiobook has a specific timeline. It has to be delivered by the 1st of April, 2011, and we're now the 15th of January. So I have approximately 75 days to generate this audiobook, this audio CD, because there's a contract at the other end where the audio stores and it's going to be available online for purchase. And I want to use that to 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 start generating some some energy around the book that I want to deliver. In the so my audio CD project now is starting to get specifics. It, it's a part of a bigger whole. Every project is part of a bigger whole. Measurable. Well, okay, very measurable. In this case, either I have an audio CD or I don't. Um, I can measure the progress. You know, so the 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 goal has a measurement to it. It could be a measurement in terms of uh, you know your income by 20%. Okay, so now the measurement is your income. You get to measure, you have to be able to measure the change that you want to create. Audacious. This is where I, I, I diverge a bit. There's a debate whether goals should be attainable or they should be audacious. Attainable goals are goals that I know I can reach, where there is not much possibility of failure. Uh, I'm writing a, a blog post right now because in Canada, the uh, the health board of Canada is revising downward the amount of uh, their recommendations on the amount of exercise people should be doing on a daily basis because they say too many people are just not doing it. So we'll lower the standards, and that way more people will be able to attain it. Well, lowering your standards is not a way to increase your performance. To raise your standards. You have to raise your goal. And that's why I talk about the importance of audacious goals. I don't believe goals should be attainable. I believe they should be audacious. And I define it in a very specific way. Audacious to me means one foot in my zone of experience. So the zone of experience is what I have done in the past. And then the other foot is just outside the zone of experience. So there is an element of unknown. There is an element of risk, of uncertainty. But it is not completely disconnected from my experience because I have one foot in my zone of experience. Uh, for example, when people, it happens a lot when people set goals to increase their income. They say, I want to double my income this year. I'll, I say, well, how much did you make the last two years, or the average of the last two years? And then uh, I have to look, okay, is doubling their income feasible? I'm trying to double your income and your income is at 5%. I want to double it to $50,000. That's a huge jump. That means there's a lot of things that need to go right, uh, especially if, if you look even farther back in their lives and they've never earned $50,000 at anything in their lives. Trying to double their income in one year becomes not a doable goal. So 
basically, when I help people define goals in terms of increasing income, I say, well, the first step, let's look back at the average of your three best years that you've ever earned in your life. And let's see first, the first goal with your business is to match that average. So it's audacious. It's just within the zone of experience. Uh, the, the, the unknowns this time is in the past, they may have earned it as a salaried employee. Now they have to earn it in their own business. But in terms of, they have a certain comfort, they have a certain familiarity with that, uh, with the number at the end. So it's, this is where a good coach comes in is to help you define the right audaciousness of are real. It has to be something that's real, really important to you, in alignment with your mission, your vision, your passion, your manifesto, your 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 why. It has to be really connected to the heart. We were talking before the difference between vision and intention, the energy you put behind it. Well, the R is where you get that energy from. And then, of course, T for timeline. So well-defined goal, S-M-A-R-T, your SMART goal, specific, measurable, audacious, real and timeline. The next characteristic of a project is it has to change the status quo. You've always done what if you always do what you've always done, you've always get what you've always got. And so the idea with a project, projects are moving you forward. If a project is not moving you forward, it's merely a task. I don't call it a project. It can be a huge task, but if it's what you've done in the past, it's just a task. It's not a project. So you want to grow your zone of experience. You want to grow that zone of uh, what you, where you've been, what you've done, uh, in order to to grow personally, grow as uh, grow your business and grow your experience. You want it to be stimulating. You want it to be when you think of the project that you get excited, that um, you can't go to sleep, you can't do it because again the fine line between fear and, and passion. You want it stimulating enough so that it generates the good kind of adrenaline, the adrenaline that moves you to positive proaction uh, and not the stimulating in terms of stimulating fear. So, and that's where defining audacious becomes really important. You want this project to change the status quo in a positive, tangible way. And of course, audacious. You do want it to be audacious. And projects for me are, are your signature. They, they, people, you are the result of your projects. And, and that's how people see you. This is how people define you. So look at, look for projects, define projects that are audacious. Third characteristic, the success of this project is a high priority. You have to be committed. That means that there, you have to put it to a high priority. And, and that means that what you say you're going to do now becomes your number one priority. Uh, you may want to write that book. You may want to lose that weight. You may want to get more clients. That means make more calls or, or do an event. But if you leave it to the very last minute, the project's not a high priority and it's going to fail. And I really like Seth Godin's book, Lynchpin, which is his latest book, H-P-I-N, Lynchpin, because he specifically talks about that. The importance of shipping and taking the time, being committed so that you are shipping what you promise that you're going to ship. Communication. It's something that you're talking about. There's something that you're communicating about. It's visible. Your projects must be visible. Invisible projects don't work. And you want integration versus balance. When you're working on a high priority project, you're probably not in balance. However, you can be integrated in your life. That means that, uh, yes, you're probably going to be putting more time, more effort, more energy in getting this project shipped. But that's okay because you're integrated. You're carving time in your day, in your life, in your energy. And it may mean that some things are pushed aside temporarily. Make sure those things that you push aside temporarily are not things that help you renew and regenerate. And we're going to be talking about that in future Soul Success workshops about the importance of regeneration. But don't sweat the balance and the life balance. Don't sweat it. I really believe it's integration. Integration is about ebb and flow. 
It's about the constantly re evolving uh, character, the use of your time, the use of your energy. You want good control systems for your project to be successful. That means a defined plan written down. Now, I'm not talking about creating a big volume, but rather it can be, a, I, I like using PowerPoint. It's a series of PowerPoint slides for defining a project and making project or something that can be successful. You want to record and measure your progress. That's a defining characteristic of a successful project, that at any time I can tell you precisely where I am in my project plan, how I'm moving forward. And it goes back to what we were talking about, the action plan at the beginning. Recording and measure progress is all about your feedback. And finally, accountability. If I do a project just for myself, it's really, really hard for me to keep the energy going. So, so I believe a lot in power, uh, in, in uh, power circles, is what I call them. That's my flavor of a uh, mastermind. And I'll be telling you a little bit about what the power circle is in a couple of minutes. Uh, but, but having that accountability, having to deliver your, your reports and your results to somebody else, really helps to make a project successful. Projects, projects I've started that I have not finished, it's often because I have not created the accountability to myself and to others. And finally, da daily action steps. You need those daily action steps that, that help you to move forward. So, it's, so it is about spending, you know, a project that's a high priority, I should be spending 45 minutes to 90 minutes a day on a daily basis on the project. It, it's that important. So I carve out the time to make it happen. And I define it into two phases and two parts and into actions. So basically what I'm doing is I'm chunking down a large project that can go over 12, 15, 18, 24 weeks into phases and into parts and into actions. And a, a typical phase should be about a month, about four or five weeks with a tangible result at the end, a draft or the first revision, or, or you know, so if I'm talking about my book, if I'm talking about getting more clients, okay, that I have that I have an event that I'm selling towards or an offer that I'm selling towards. Parts are about one week. Uh, and also at the end of that week, I should have something tangible to show. In, my, in a lot of the coaching, the, the individual coaching that I do, uh, we work on this concept of phases, parts, and then actions, which are your daily actions. And you measure and demonstrate your actions as you move, as you move through them, so that you're creating the results that are important to you. So that's the concept of the um, of projects. And I'm going to be talking a lot about projects this year. That's my message for this first part of 2011 that I want to get across. And I just want to take a moment to introduce to you how I, I offer to you a, a structure so you can define and, and take action on projects that are important to you. And I call it the Power Circle Productivity Experience, from dream to done. If you go from dreamtodone.com, I'm going to show you what that is. And dreamtodone.com. It is this, the Power Circle Productivity Experience. And you should be seeing it on your screen right now from dreamtodone.com. What it is, it is a 15-week process to help you define and execute on a project. So you might have a new product strategy, uh, you might, uh, or a new product or service that you want to, uh, to deliver. You might want to put in place better systems. You might want to increase the number of clients you have. You even might want to make a strategic change in your positioning, uh, in your branding, and sort of go off in a different direction in your business. Well, all those can be defined into projects. And the way that I do it, I have two parts to the process. The first is called the Productivity Boot Camp. The next Productivity Boot Camp is starting on the 22nd of February, 2011. And what it is, it's a three-week process where you put together your project plan. Uh, you will, uh, twice a week we meet, so it is a boot camp, it is quite intensive. 
and each session has a theme and you have work to do after each session so that at the end of the three weeks that we spent together you have an actionable project plan that's my goal that uh, so that you have this deliverable here so it's defined just like a project that by the end of the productivity boot camp you have a workable project plan that's the boot camp three weeks and then a 12-week productivity mastermind which is a self-directed and group coaching process so basically for a period of 12 weeks 12 weekly sessions the self-directed part is um, you know how are your systems in place your environment so there's like a topic each week for you to work on to help you improve your the way you're delivering your project and then we have a weekly call mastermind call I call it the power circle where with everybody else on the call you are sharing your progress your successes and also maybe what's holding you back and you can get specific help no matter what your project and what's really cool about the power circle is that everybody on the call is working on their own projects but what tends to happen is that we identify issues that come up that we all share no matter what the project some people their project could be in terms of getting more clients like I said before or or changing the direction of your business or launching a new business product or strat uh, or service it could it could be one of many many things that you want to get done here with your business I encourage you to take a look at from dream to done.com it'll give you a good idea of what the process is and you'll be hearing a lot more about it um, later on this week I'm going to be launching a promotion related to from dream to done.com and uh, and I also look forward to your questions and uh, comments and feedback about it if you want to reach me anytime the best way you can reach me I'm just going to show you my blog page which is blog.devender.com my blog here the best way to reach me is to come to my blog and you're going to see contact information so you can reach me at coach at uh, you can reach me uh, on Facebook you can reach me uh, in many many ways but I look forward to to finding out what your projects are this year and to accompany you in making them succeed so with that so with that I want to um, invite you if you have questions uh, to simply um, turn on your your um, microphone and you can speak by pressing the talk button at the bottom and I'm just going to uh, you know if you want uh, here we're going to do this microphone grant microphone all you have now have access if you ask a question feel free to do so Well, uh, you can always ask questions by sending me an email uh, to coach at devender.com and or on Facebook. And I look forward to, uh, to finding out what are your projects this year and uh, helping you in creating the success that you really want. Have a great day. Thanks. You're welcome. I hear somebody has their uh, microphone on. Hello, Devendra. I'm not sure if my microphone is on or not. I can hear I can you. Hear this you. Is this is Keith. Yes, this is Keith. I met you at the solo entrepreneur uh, meeting uh, last month. I was wondering yes, if yes, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I was wondering if you had any specific advice for people who find themselves. Um, I think. Um, I think oh, sorry. If you okay, find okay, okay. Uh, people who are interminably stuck at the uh, strategy planning stage.
the um, uh, I have a, uh, a specific module on that because that happens a lot. And basically, what I do with people who are stuck in the strategy loop, who keep on uh, going over and over again uh, on their plan, it is about taking. It's, it is about stopping, uh, and it's probably what is happening is that the goal is too big. Uh, the your intentions are too big, and so what I often do is I I walk back, you know, I I I I, I lower the bar to start off with. Let's create a mini project, something that we can deliver in the next couple of weeks, something where you can see there is a, there is a result, and. And that starts to build the confidence back up. So uh, it's great to have a one-year project, but for sometimes, for some people, for some situations, one year is way too long. Uh, so we, we, we break it down. And when you learn to do a mini project that you deliver in, in a couple of weeks, and you start building up the, the, uh, the confidence, then we can, we can start to, to uh, raise the bar. And, uh, and do bigger and bigger projects. Also, it goes back to really understanding who am I? Mission, vision, permission. Going back to the clarity of the fundamentals. That's a, that's a big piece of work that I do also with my clients a lot. Creating, going back to your personal mission statement, and if you don't have one, create one. And there's some really good processes out there. And just test. What is it that you really, really want to create as an impact around you? So there's some foundation work. There is some, uh, so, you know, uh, some, some tactical work in terms of redefining the goal, making the the project the project more achievable. But the project and mentality uh, becomes really, really important. I, I think it is. Hope that gave you a couple of couple of clues. Steph, thank you very much for your hints. Okay, so uh, yes, so please stay tuned for for further uh, solo success workshops like this. Um, I'm uh, I have some some good ideas I'd like to pass on to you, and definitely stay tuned. I would love to see you all as part of the productivity mastermind where you define a project. I'll walk you through the process, and once you've learned it, it you'll never look at your to-do list the same way again. Have a great day, and, and uh, best of success in your project.